So once again, welcome to practice. My name is Elizabeth and I'm here with Blue Matter Project offering this trauma-informed practice for us today to move through any feelings, sensations, or maybe pain that may be sitting in our bodies during this time. Setting yourself up, whether you want to just sit to begin or lay back, let's see if we can just close our eyes or soften our gaze, giving yourself the opportunity to arrive in your space. And you might even consider beginning your practice with a nice deep inhale in through your nose, and exhale out through your mouth. And if that wasn't enough for you, maybe again a deep inhale in through your nose, and this time let out a sigh or a sound. <sighs> Relaxing your shoulders, letting yourself become just a little bit more at ease. We'll see if we can begin our practice today with a body scan. So whether you are seated or you're laying back, we'll start from the crown of our head. Maybe we can take into account what type of energy we might feel around our skull space, that highest chakra. Do we feel a vibrating energy? Do we feel heavy? And it may be challenging sometimes to tune into whatever sensations are there. We really just have to spend a little more time quieting our mind so we can work on tuning inwards. Muscularly, see if you can soften around your jawline, unclenching, perhaps releasing the bite spaces between your teeth, or relaxing your cheekbones as though your face is resting after a smile. See if you can begin to draw your awareness into the clarity of your breath. The crispness of the air that is passing through your nostrils. Down through your throat space, stretching through your lungs. Filling that space in the diaphragm, feeling your belly rise. And then it's reversal, perhaps warmer air expelling through the body, softer air. Asking yourself to tune into your heart space. around your chest, physically, emotionally. Are there any burdens that may be weighing there? From today, this week, the past few months, or perhaps a little further back in time. If we could ask ourselves to release just one thing, just one thing today, what it comes to mind.
know, make that our intention for our practice. Try to observe and potentially shift that one thing, even if it's only for a moment in time. Let's begin our practice with one hand to our belly and the other hand to our heart space. Feel that exhale that you need to take. Recognize the inhales that are going to give you the life and the support in order to make those deep exhales. And give yourself a moment of acknowledgement for showing up to your mat to take this practice and this time from you. Again, find a big inhale, breath in through our nose, and out through your mouth. And send your arms outwards in space, again, whether you're sitting or laying back, finding a big reach, a nice broad, open T position. Send energy through your fingertips here, that love and that light that you have from your heart space Feel it vibrating out through your arms, into your palms, energy in your hands, out through your fingertips. Feel that reach. Feel here how much you can hold, how much space you can take up. And take a really big inhale. And as you exhale, draw your arms in and give yourself a hug. Reach around to your shoulder blades behind you. Feel the squeeze physically pull in. Tune into that sensation. What does that feel like for you? What comes up? And in your own time, as you feel ready, we'll take again our arms out wide, finding that expansion. We'll do this just one more time. Let's try to pause at that end space. Again, energy through your arms, through your fingertips. Feel this power that you hold, this love and this care, not only for others, but also for yourself. Take that big inhale. And one more time, hug in towards yourself, maybe crossing the opposite arm on top. Squeezing in tightly. Taking a few breaths. Recognizing how that feels, that sensation of giving yourself love of supporting yourself. Again, as you feel ready, we can take our arms out by our sides, just taking one last big stretch here, and then we'll continue reaching, but this time send your arms overhead. So take a big inhale. If you are laying down, you can maybe point through your toes, find a nice long stretch. And as you exhale, those that are laying down, hug your knees in towards your chest, giving yourself a little rock from side to side. So if you were seated, we will make our way into that position. Laying back, rocking knees from side to side, finding a bit of a release here in the low spine. And once we find that soft release in the low back, 
just come through the center and let's try to plant our feet down. So with our feet down, we find ourselves in what looks like a preparation for bridge. Feet are about hip distance apart. Let's turn our palms face up. Feel your collarbone broad. And we may even consider pressing into the back of our skull so our chest can lift and we can hug our shoulders underneath us. So we feel more ease in our back. And then just arrive. Feel how your back is here against the ground. You have this activation by spreading through our toes, picking that space to gaze, whether you're looking up at the ceiling, past your nose, a little forward on a diagonal, or maybe your eyes are closed. And again, we're really doing our best to tune inward. We want to check into something very subtle the energy at the end of our spine in our tailbone. See if you feel a sense of weightedness or heaviness in your sacrum. That triangular bone that's all the way at the end of the spine, our tail. There are many nerve endings there. I'm going to try to start shifting some energy in that space. So we hold a lot of work and a lot of emotions around our pelvic floor. So very subtly, think of the dynamic of cat and cow where your pelvis takes an anterior and posterior tilt. You're gonna stay on your back, so your shoulders are still connected to the ground, your tail is still connected to the ground, but we think as we inhale, we can arc our back a little bit, raising our rib cage, creating space underneath our low spine, and then as we exhale, pull the rib cage down, tucking your tail under, lifting pubic bone to the sky. Good, moving through that on your own time. So maybe inhales again, heart space expands. Exhale, we feel and find that tuck. Now make sure that we're not holding our breath here. We're allowing that rocking to begin happening on a timing that makes sense for us, as slow or as fast as you like. And again, as we do this, we want to explore whatever sensations arise. So as you're tilting forward and back, if ever there seems to be a time where you would like to hold the frame, such as perhaps in the tuck, you really like that sensation of pressing your low back into the floor and feeling the abdominal wall engaged. Feel free to stay there. This is your practice. Our work is to tune in to see what it is that we need in this time. Whether that's constant movement or whether it's stillness. We'll give this just a few more moments. And then eventually come into a space where we find enough activation in the top where we'll press through our feet and shoulders and start to feel your hips float away from the ground. Arriving in your bridge position, let's try to keep our gaze up towards the ceiling. Eyes can be closed if you like. Engage the glutes, feel this activation in your low back, seats, and hamstrings. Spreading through all 10 toes, feel grounding down in order to rise up. Ask yourself what it feels like to be in this very stable frame, this rooted sensation. And again, whenever you're ready, give yourself one last inhale up top and an exhale to begin rolling downwards from top of spine to tail, one vertebrae at a time as you feel comfortable making your way back down. Feet can float away from the ground. 
Perhaps again, a little rock from side to side. And then we'll shift ourselves forward and back as many times as you feel you need. And that might even feel really nice rocking forward and back. Kind of a nice release from your back. Eventually shifting over your shins, planting hands, and making your way to a tabletop position. Finding hands and knees. I'm making sure here that palms are spread here. Fingertips spread right underneath shoulders, knees under the lines of your hips, starting to move through your spine, just the same, that cat and cow action. Forward and back a few times. And then beginning to make a consideration to explore other ways. So perhaps you would like to go side to side, looking over each shoulder, Maybe you want to try circling through the rib cage, creating this kind of barrel-like or skipping rope action. And then doing your best to find fluidity all the way to the crown of your head. Sometimes we can get very stuck in finding motion around the center of our spine and then our neck feels really stiff. So see if you can just let your head go whatever way seems natural to you. Rather than thinking about it, just closing your eyes and almost letting your body paint the space. Again, if there's a space you would like to stop and hold, feel free, taking a few breaths. Deciding whether you'd like to continue on or moving forward with my instruction, we can eventually send our hands forward and allow ourselves to bow down. Forehead meets the ground, taking puppy pose. Now, if this doesn't feel necessarily comfortable for you with your tail high, we can always shift back to your full child's pose. Either position, few breaths. Just letting your energy rest, forehead grounding, letting your third eye melt into the earth. Tune back into the space where your breath is, asking yourself if your breath is high up in your chest or if it's drawn deep down into your belly. And neither is right or wrong. We just want to be able to assess how deep our breath is, what state of energy our body is in. In your own time, as you feel ready, let's shift to child's pose and then take a deeper stretch by walking hands over to one side of your space. Seeing if you can still rest around the back of your neck, crown of your head to release, breathing into that opposing side. And then gently switching, finding that other edge of your mat. Perhaps giving that a breath or two more. And then in your own time, shifting back to tabletop position, tucking our toes underneath us, trying to get all 10 toes tucked evenly and pressing through fingertips, rising hips up, taking a single downward dog just to stretch out the backs of your knees with potential there to walk on the spot, pedaling through your feet, finding that dynamic stretch at the backs of your legs. And we'll take one more breath here. 
Letting your heels rise high. Let's rock forward to a plank position. We may have to walk our hands further forward, finding that alignment, that long energetic space. We can always have our knees down here as an alternative to support us. Keeping your gaze forward, give yourself one more big breath high, and then slowly lower all the way down to your belly, making your way down to your belly. And let's set our feet a little wider. So we're gonna take wide space today occupying that room off the edges of our mat. Come to your fingertips here, lifting your elbows, and let's work on pressing into the ground. Now, don't take so much room right now. For now, just find a little wave. So inhale, little lift, exhale the wave back down. And we want to try to follow our breath as though that energy is rising, again, from your tail to the crown of your head, and back to your mat. And this wave is something that we can begin tuning into, knowing that this wave is coming from you, your energy, your breath, your space. If you feel at any point that that wave can start to find more expansiveness, Working on pressing a little deeper, rising a little higher, taking bigger breaths. You may feel quite nice to potentially explore closing your eyes as you take this wave in your body. seeing if anything is again coming up for you from that spinal space, from that low guttural space, towards the throat, towards the head. So do we feel like maybe emotions that are sitting low in our body could potentially here come up to the feeling space of the heart, or the speaking space in our throat, or maybe the acknowledging space in our mind. Give yourself however much more time you need there, eventually making your way down to rest. We'll draw our legs in closer and just take our hands to cross here forearm over forearm, and let your head rest. Either way, or either cheek down, maybe it's forehead directly down, just letting yourself be prone to your mat, tuning in to the breath that's here in your belly, and paying attention to the feeling of your back gently rising and falling. Perhaps thinking again back to that hug that we gave ourselves at the beginning of practice, how laying down on your belly prone to the floor can also feel very supportive. We have this entire grounding space near our chest that's holding us. You can take as much time as you feel you need here. Whenever you feel ready to move again, we will take our gaze to lift gently and then bend in both knees. So we just have our feet floating here. Our hands can come down by our sides and elbows don't necessarily need to be lifted right now so they can just rest. And we'll just find a nice windshield wiper action in our legs. So. Think of your legs moving from side to side, from the knee joint. This is not necessarily something we do very much in yoga practice. 
Often we do it with our feet on the floor and our knees bent. That does have a fully different sensation. So here we may feel more of a release where the thigh bone connects towards the hip, or maybe again, right at the tail, at the sacrum. After a few times of rocking from side to side, you're gonna add a little bit of effort here into our upper body. So take your hands towards the ground beside you, elbows lifted like you wanna push up. And this is where we're gonna take the space beside us. So making sure that we've got room next to us. Let's try to shift first to our right. And as you shift to your right, feel your left leg going behind you. Like come back into your belly. And as your legs go to the left, your right leg comes behind you. Okay, so you have a little bit of a swinging, arcing action happening. And maybe we start to see that when our body turns, our gaze may also turn. So as legs go to the right, we look left. And as our legs go left, we look right. Now, for some of us, this may be more than enough. We feel that twist in our back, that work through our chest. We may consider continuing to explore just like so, or we press ourselves up as we shift. And just take a moment to take your hands off of the floor and then return back. So this becomes playful in a sense. As we shift, we find that space, hands leave the ground, almost like we're taking a turn around to the opposite space. And then again, we can roll back onto our belly. Okay. So as we practice this, we can make it as big or as small as we like. But the point here is to try to let go of any effort. So the body starts to find a pattern or a rhythm, almost like those spinal waves that we were doing. Once that pattern comes into that physical frame, we can try to shut off the thought process. It's not about what it looks like, but how this begins to feel for us. And if, while we do this, we can pay attention to the breath that's guiding. Perhaps closing our eyes as we do this, now that that pattern has begun to become very ingrained. In this movement, we can even continue to add on by taking a reach with the opposing hand or arm once we make our way from side to side. So if we're going to the right, our right arm will take that expansion. And as we roll back and legs shift to the left, once we twist, left arm will take that reach. And that's just adding a little more space, a little more energy into the sides of your waist, out through fingertips. And then going back to that idea of if you feel at any point that you would like to hold placement, you're choosing that space to just stay. Stop whenever you like, feel your breath there. When your body says so, Shift back into the movement if that's what's being called to you. And we're just observing. 
So if there's somewhere that we're being asked to hold or asked to move, perhaps ask yourself if there's a why. That movement or that stillness could be directly correlated to our time off of our mat. Today, tomorrow, this week. Are you being asked to move or are you being asked to find stillness? Okay, let's explore this for just a moment more. In your own time, once you feel ready and you come back and see your belly, Begin to go back to the windshield wiper with the legs, just so we can kind of dial down that energy. So it isn't a, a full stop. It's like we never want to press on the brakes really hard, right? We want to slowly push into that brake, find ease and deceleration. Eventually coming back through the center, we'll take our hands nearer to our low chest and press back over the knees, either tabletop, if your spine needs some release time, going back to that side to side stretch, or we can press fully back again to child's pose. Few breaths wherever you arrive. Once you feel like your breath has deepened, back down into that space around your waist, low belly, that diaphragmatic breath, we can pull ourselves back to the tabletop and just walk your knees in towards the backs of your hands, either crossing at your ankles to shift or sweeping your legs around, you choose. And we'll come to sit. Now, if you would like to sit on something, you can set yourself up with a um, bolster, or perhaps you have a blanket or a pillow that's nearby. Anything to elevate your hips so that you don't feel tension in your hip flexors. Okay, our knees are nice and rested below the line of our hips. We'll find ourselves in a nice, easy seated position, and then just begin to continue finding that dynamic of movement by rocking forward in space and back. So originally we did the work in the pelvis where the pelvis was tilting. Now the pelvis is staying quite structured and we're asking the full forward space of the chest to rock and return back. Now leaning back might feel a little bit more challenging than rocking forward. But we wanna feel our sitting bones really grounded down underneath us and we're just letting that kind of hinging action happen where we rock or tip forward and tip back in space. And hands can be on the knees or by your side if that's preferable. Again, we have the option to consider closing your eyes or softening the gaze and just feeling that continued momentum, that energy shifting. choice becomes yours whether you would like to continue the movement or work on finding that stillness. First we feel it in our bodies. Maybe we can let that feeling translate to our heart space. So we feel physically whether we like to continue moving or find stillness and then recognize that the heart space and again the mind space and potentially vocal space after this practice, those things will correlate off of our mat.
for myself in this time. Everything feels like it's been moving very fast, constant kind of drawing or pulling of awareness and energy outwards, outwards, outwards. And it's hard to come back to that stillness. So now I've kind of found that movement in my body, that shift of energy, let it kind of stir itself up. And I can see very clearly now stillness is being asked of me. So I personally will come back to that center space, just stay. Perhaps for others, you feel like things have been too still, too quiet. You need to shake things up. You need to step out. Only you would know. We'll give again a few more moments to that exploration of stillness or motion. Whenever you feel like you're ready to close that exploration, give yourself again a really strong inhale breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feel your shoulders draw away from your ears. Good. And whichever leg you have crossed in front, we'll just work towards that side. So the shin that's in front, go ahead and extend it out by your side. And give yourself a little wiggle again just to feel like you have a comfortable seat. So if you hadn't reached for a prop, maybe consider putting one underneath now if you're feeling like sitting too long. Okay, we'll send our arms outwards in space again like we had done at the beginning of practice. Finding that reach, finding that expansion, that breath that comes from center all the way through the fingertips. Give yourself a moment to maybe just wiggle the fingers. Feel how you're touching the edges of your space. And then as you're ready, we'll take a breath to find a nice arcing side stretch towards that extended leg. And just observe that you're not letting the top arm collapse over the face. We want to keep the cheekbone nice and bright to the sky. Doesn't matter where your opposite hand is, whether it's on the floor or on your shin. And then you choose from here whether you just want to revel in this side body stretch, stay, feel how it feels. Or again, if you need to find a little bit of movement out of it and back into it. Let yourself follow with your breath. Whether you're moving or you're just holding that stillness. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Perhaps there's space there for you to deepen in the breath. And eventually, as you're ready, we'll meet together where we'll draw ourselves back up through the center. Take a moment to feel that reach once more. And again, take a hug. Give yourself a good squeeze. Whenever you feel ready to let go, and relax out of that space, let's bend in the extended leg. So we'll draw that leg in and sweep it over so it crosses over the opposite knee. If that's too much, just bring it in front of the shin. We want to take a little bit of a twist to release our low back. So we're holding on to that knee that's lifted. 
lengthening through our spine. Try again to draw both sitting bones down. Opposite hand behind you, so you're twisting open towards that back shoulder. Think of that energy running up the spine from tail to crown of head. Just giving yourself a breath or two there as you feel that rotation, that length and that expansion. And then as you're ready, we can come on back through the center, gazing forward and we'll switch legs to begin again. Okay, so the leg that was crossed deeply over is now under and the opposing leg stretches out by our side. So again, we can give ourselves a little bit of a shift, finding our sitting bones underneath you. If at all we feel a pinch in our hip, okay, leg may be too much out by your side in line with your ear. We can dial it in by taking that diagonal a little smaller. Arms will reach out. Again, find that expansion, that breath, and that energy. And recognize that it isn't necessarily coming from our shoulder space. Okay, it's coming from our heart space, the space between our shoulders and our back, and also from your waist, deep from underneath your rib cage. That breath that you have got that full reach. Maybe a little wiggle through fingers. And when you feel ready, finding that side body stretch again towards that extended leg, up and over without shadowing your face. Feel that reach. Take your time to tune in. Ask yourself whether you want to stay or if perhaps taking movement back through center and back into it is a better practice for you today. Allowing yourself again to tune in to your breath as it guides you. Acknowledging when there are spaces you'd like to hold. Taking whatever last bit of time you need, wherever you are, and eventually shifting your way back to that center space, arms opening up, Still feeling that reach. Gather energy through fingertips. Give yourself a big inhale. And again, exhale to hug, perhaps opposite arm on top. Squeezing in to yourself. Really holding tight. When you feel ready, arms can again expand and release by your sides. Again, we take that extended leg, bend in the knee, and shift that leg to cross either over the opposite knee or in front. Okay. Sitting bones down, hugging into that tall bent knee, and twisting open to the opposite direction with our hand tented behind us, very light in your fingertips, Feeling just here like it's a support for you to grow through to the crown of your head. Shoulder space is open, chest expansive. Giving it one last bit of breath. And then eventually coming back and through the center. Good, and we'll shift back to our tabletop position. So we'll make our way back two hands and knees and go back to that easy exploration of either cat and cow to relax to loosen the spine or perhaps once more those side to side tail legs or full circle barreling through the chest and releasing the back
Last few moments for exploration here. And gradually shifting out of this form, we will walk our way back to the top of our mat. And send your legs around and forward in front of you. Giving yourself again a little bit of a wiggle on the spot. Just going ahead and releasing through the backs of your hips, backs of your knees. My dog's having a little bit of a sneeze. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> and we going to send your arms over your head. Take an inhale breath to really reach high here. And then begin to reach forward as you tuck through your tail and slowly make your way back and down. And take your time with this. For some of us, it may be more challenging to hold that core strength. But you're taking your time as best as you can, trying to articulate that lower. Articulating your way down. Eventually, when you do get to your mat, Take a nice big stretch once again, pointing through toes, reaching through fingers. Inhale, full expansion. And exhale to hug those knees back in. Little rock from side to side. Relaxing the back of your head. We may consider here Closing our practice with a strong hug once more. Seeing if we can hug around our knees. Letting the forehead come in towards that knee space. Squeezing into a tiny little ball. Giving ourselves all of that tension. And then eventually as you feel ready, relaxing back down to your mat and choosing whatever finishing placement you'd like. So some of us may consider staying in that kind of preparation for bridge, perhaps knees together and feet apart. That's really helpful to release the low spine, relax again those nerve endings around the tail. If that doesn't feel suitable, Maybe it's the other way. Maybe we want to open where soles of our feet come together and knees come apart, more of a butterfly position. We can stretch our legs long, going into a traditional resting frame. Or you can always choose to go into a fetal position on our side. or perhaps even finish seated. Choose whatever form feels best for you, knowing that you'll be here for a few minutes. Know that whatever you choose, you always have the choice to come out of it, to shift, Illness is never requested of you. Know in your body you have that choice to continue to move or shift whenever you feel discomfort. Eyes can remain opened, looking around the space. Or, if it's preferable, close. Maybe observing whatever little specks of light are hitting the backs of your eyelids. Or whatever light or color you can see from behind your eyes.
tune back into your breath, not adjusting it, but just checking in. Whether it feels full or shallow. Whether it's in your chest or in your belly. If it has at all shifted. Tune back into your physical frame, the feeling of the muscles on the bones. Whether perhaps they feel a little more at ease. Or perhaps recognizable or before they were not. Tuning back into your heart space. Asking if anything has shifted emotionally. On your awareness to your throat space. Perhaps we feel a little more at ease and available to speak. To speak or to express that which we feel. And know that that may not be towards others, perhaps just to ourselves. Just let it come out. And lastly, bringing your awareness to that prefrontal cortex, that space right in front of mind. Those are there, the thoughts of how we feel within ourselves. the narrative that we tell, that narrative that gives that loop or that feedback to the rest of our system. same way our body found those patterns of movement and fluidity quite quickly, our mind also 
creates those patterns and pathways with thoughts that we tell ourselves. So if those thoughts are there at the forefront of your mind, something that may need to change, what new narrative can we make? finish our practice today recognizing that all of this work is constant, that it takes time, continued effort, and constant reflection, awareness of sensation and observation. And that that thought should not be a daunting task, but instead should be honored as a continued exploration into the self. Continued regrowth. Continued expression. and a continued sense of evolving. Let's finish with one hand back to our belly and the other back to our heart space. Giving yourself this last moment of gratitude Take one last big breath together in and out. Thank you so much for your practice today. Namaste.